Hello, I'm Odin, and this time we're going to make the last major piece for the full suit Gundam build. It's the leg unit for the RX-78 Gundam. The legs for this suit feel like the biggest challenge of the build. The lower legs have a lot of pieces to them, so I started with the upper legs first. The design is very similar to the upper arms, it just has larger parts. The outside panel on each thigh is thick with a layer of 6mm foam glued onto some 10mm foam. The deep panel lines are cut into the 6mm foam before they're glued. That way the bottom of the large panel lines are all smooth and flat. The panels that will be on the inside are much thinner with some 2mm foam glued onto 6mm foam. Less foam on the inside of the legs should make the leg armor easier to wear and walk around in. But both panels need to have a bevel cut on the edge and they're supposed to match, so they need to look like they're the same thickness. On the inside panels, I add strips of 10 millimeter foam to make them look thicker. And I bevel cut them the same way, so now both panels look like they're the same thickness. The front and back of the thighs are a series of square panels, just like the biceps. The pieces are easy to cut out, and I still need more panel lines to complete them, and I'm using a real grade series Gundam leg for my panel line reference. I draw them on with a pencil, and then I use a wood burner and a metal ruler to create my panel lines. I also include the smaller details that appear in the model. And just like the biceps, the lowest panel has a double bevel edge, and that is the one panel that I glue in. The back panels don't have the small sides on yet, so for now I felt I needed to add a 2mm foam strip to help glue the beveled edge to the larger panel. The thighs taper at the knee, and when the pieces are loose in the table, it's really hard to tell which side has the taper. Oh, I painted the wrong end. Oh, dang it. Basically, the thighs are easy to make. Pretty much just a box with some extra cutouts around the knee. After they're put together, I need to finish the panel lines that cover them, still checking the model kit for accuracy. And adding the flat oval shape with that metal template that I made, which kept the shape consistent throughout the full suit. Confident that I got all the details finished, I could move on to the lower leg. So there's a reason that I was saving the leg for last, or I should say we were saving the leg for last. This is just the calf. It's got a few parts to it. So I've got the knee, and then I've got the back of the calf, uh, connections for the knee. So all the pieces are generated from Arbor Smith Designer. What I need to do now is label them. Like the knee, I know I want to make them all out of 10 mil. Joe did most of the work with Armor Smith Designer and with this set of patterns, so I really needed his help understanding them. I decided to cut out the biggest, most complicated piece first, and this makes the back of the calf, which is a very large, rounded piece on the finished leg. This single piece is half of one of them. When I glue all the seams together, it pulls the 6mm foam into the shape that I want. The size and shape is like making two more helmets or two big shoulder pads and each calf gets five raised detail panels that are eight millimeters thick. We made the eight millimeter foam by gluing two millimeter to some six millimeter and then cutting the parts out. Making them this way made it easy to keep this piece higher than the rest. Just line up the back of the eight millimeter panel to the six millimeter leg. Most of the other parts are cut out from 10 millimeter HD foam. And there are a lot of them. All the lower leg panels have four copies, an inside and outside part for each leg. I was cutting two right side parts and two left side parts. This is why we talked about which piece needed to be what size. It was nice to just cut everything out at once, right in the beginning. Right at the bottom of the leg are a set of small panels with large panel lines. So all of these had two millimeter strips glued to them. And then when they were glued together, they made a nice clean panel line. And this method works really well, but it takes a lot more time than just using a wood burner. To speed this build up, Joe jumped in to help glue together many of the parts. These panels that we're working on will be the bottom cuff of the leg armor. The panels that fit right above the cuff have a deep four millimeter wide panel line, and they're separated from the cuff with more two millimeter foam. There's a good sized slope in the front of the leg leading to the foot. I wanted to make sure the panel lines lined up, so I used a piece of cardboard to keep the contact cement from sticking incorrectly. The back panel was a single piece with bevel cut edges. All the bevel cuts were made on my bandsaw checking the fit of the calf of the lower leg, and everything is fitting together correctly. Okay, cool. Still need to make more pieces. Around the top of each leg is a fender-looking part that connects the lower leg to the knee. These parts were cut from 6mm foam, and all the edges were cut at 45 degrees, which makes a nicer seam. 
The kneecaps on a Gundam are huge. They fit all the way down the front with a vent at the bottom. With most Gunpla kits, the knees slide and move when the leg bends, but a model kit doesn't have to fit a person inside, so these legs will have the knee glued to the front. It's also less moving parts, which means fewer places for problems to happen. I wanted to see if removing excess glue from the surface was better than just grinding it off with a rotary tool. It's easy to do, but the solvent fumes are really bad for you, so gloves and a vapor mask are needed. And it works really well. It takes a little bit of time and would be worth doing on seams that don't need any putty, but these seams will, and I grind down the sides that don't match. While holding the calf like this, the sanded lines are pretty light and small, but when it's glued to the knee, the radius of the part gets a lot smaller and the sanded lines are a lot easier to see. I should have glued them on first and then sanded them. Gluing the big parts together was pretty simple and leaving some of the panels open was nice because I could hold on to things easier. I used paper again on the knee. That way I could focus on the first seam without the other side sticking together the wrong way. Right, I need to put a panel in here and make some vents for here. And put the knee on still. The other thing I thought it needed was some extra strips to help hold the calf to the lower leg. And I also placed some strips inside the knee. The fender pieces get attached to the top and they are really starting to look like the legs. A square of four millimeter foam is glued in behind this opening, making the large recessed panel on the back of the leg. And I get to start adding putty to the seams. This is a flexible spackle and the container is actually getting old, so what's left in here is kind of crumbly. So I started spraying the putty with water, which was the right thing to do. It really smoothed it out and it got to be really fine. And later on, I noticed it filled in all those tiny pores that are on the foam. With the seams puttied, I needed to let the legs dry, but I still needed to make knee joint cones. Now these were built the same way as the cones on the elbow and the ankles. They had their own pattern, but they're a different size. So a truncated cone is made from six millimeter foam, which is glued to a base and a cylinder is placed inside. The inside walls need to be flat. The inside detail still reminds me of an old television dial. And I glued these in with wet contact cement because I can't fit them in with dry cement. I also thought it was gonna be too tight of a fit to use paper and have it come out easy. And sanding. It's not as bad as it sounds, but it feels like it takes forever. Now I had also put putty on some seams on the front of the knee and the two eight millimeter panels. Because the inside of the lower leg flares open on the inside, compared to the knee opening, I needed to make some internal supports for the leg joint. The gray foam is six millimeter wet the foam. It's crazy tough foam that is really good for structural parts and could actually be used for functional straps. These two flat parts will give me a place to glue the knee joint that will connect the upper and lower leg. And I start adding panel lines using the model kit as a reference again. But there are a lot more panel lines and details in the lower legs. And I like doing them. I think it really helps, and I like all the extra details. With all the details burnt into the legs, they get covered in three coats of Plastidip, and in some places, white spray paint. Then comes the masking. This takes a while, covering all the parts so it can spray on the next color. Everything that stays white is covered, so a light gray can be sprayed over the leg. And once the gray is dry, another masking is needed for the ivory color. It's always enjoyable and a relief when the paint lines are clean under the masking tape. So many parts to wrap and unwrap this time. Joe's getting the panel lining put onto all the leg parts. I need to build the knee mechanism. This is gonna be done pretty much exactly the same way that I did on the arm. It's just a little bit bigger because it needs to be, right? So that's what this panel inside was put in here for. With this foam core mock-up, we'll be gluing it in place and then the thigh will attach on the top and that'll allow some movement of the parts, but they won't rotate on the thigh and they'll remain in line with each other like the robot should be. I make the knee joint with what the foam again, just like the elbow joint. I bend the corners for the kneecap plate and add a brace to help keep that angle. The tabs that will glue to the leg parts are attached to the kneecap with some Chicago bolts or binding screws. I have a fender washer between the wet the foam layers so that the layers don't rub against each other. The knee joint cover is just screwed in place. I want to be able to fix the part if something fails. Excellent. 
Excellent. All right. I add the small silver decals that I made using aluminum tape. So we've had a lot of activity getting this done and the cameras weren't on for all of that. But we've got the painting finished. We've got all the decals put on. These things are looking great. And uh, it's time to make sure they can actually fit Joe. Uh, one thing we're gonna need to do is cut out a little bit of a top here. That's just a little bit of a space so it can actually snug up and fit correctly on his leg. And then we can get the knee put in place. I make the first cut for a better fit on Joe. I take off just a little because I don't want to cut too much the first time. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think we're going to need substantially more and a little bit off the back. All right. I cut off some more and then I cut off even more. And it looks like we have a good fit for the thigh, but now we need to cut down where the leg meets the foot. Now these parts are on the model, but they won't fit under the leg armor, so they're removed. The leg needs to sit lower, so we mark an inch and a half up from the ankle because that's where the leg's hitting the foot. <laughs> Goodbye, two millimeter panel line. <laughs> Goodbye, detail. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hello, fitting. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got it. This is a compelling shot for all of you at home. <laughs> yeah, I think we got it. Cut the other leg to match and you can really see how much was removed when I cut the other thigh. Chances are even more will be cut off once he really starts to walk around. While test fitting the parts, I marked where the knee joints should be attached. But Joe had to leave and I still had more to do. To put these two together, I'm gonna need some help. Suspending the thigh was the right idea, and the paper is used to attach one side at a time. I get the legs assembled, and we're ready for a test fit of the full suit. It's been six months and six videos, but we have a full suit Gundam cosplay, and I'm really happy with this thing. And it's important to remember that this is cosplay. I've seen the comments, and I know that this isn't proportionally correct to Gunpla, but the issue is Joe, as a person, isn't proportionally correct to Gunpla. We had to change the dimensions of things so the joints would actually match up where the human joints are. Remember, Gundam are anthropomorphic. They're not anatomical. So, Things were modified, but he looks right, and I'm really happy with this. And it was nice that we got to wear this over to the other studio and get some pictures taken, because we know what we want to change, what we want to modify, and we're going to be doing that in future videos, as well as making beam sabers and a beam rifle. So all that's coming up, but for now, we've got a full suit RX-78-2 Gunpla made from foam, because this is how Odin makes. And we've got this one. Yeah. All right. Am I on camera? Yeah. Oh. I'm Mike, so they can hear you. Sweet. Even with, your, <laughs> even with all of your bullshit comments. <laughs> uh. Yeah, you'll probably end up in the video. Okay, you can paint this. <laughs>I want to thank Lachlan Bub, Linux, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.